happy Monday. Oh, look at that. I was not prepared for me over there in the corner. That, that corner. That, that is you. That, that looks very similar to <laughs> me this weekend. <laughs> anyway, happy Monday, everybody. Welcome to the Brownwood Lions Coach Show here on KOXC. I'm Derek Stuckley, along with Brownwood Lions Head Football Coach, Athletic Director, Sammy Burnett. How was your weekend, Coach? Did you look like that at any point this weekend? Like Santa? Yeah. I always look like Santa. You always look like Santa? In the, well, in the easy chair? Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, I uh, got to see the Cowboys blow out the Texans. And oh, really? Watch the, the uh, 100% Miami Dolphin prediction by everybody that knows everything oh, yeah. get beat by the Chargers, so mm-hmm. it was a good weekend. Well, I have noticed that uh, when you go to the Cowboys game, they score like 49 points, 54 points. Uh, so clearly, you need to be going to more Cowboys games. Did you hear that, Bob? No, Brandy. Brandy, <laughs> uh, uh, Brandy went to the game this weekend with Bob. Oh, that would be okay. Bob's boss or, husband, or wife, excuse mm-hmm. me. And then uh, they stumped their toe a little bit, didn't they? A little bit. They did er- good early, then didn't do anything, and then decided to score late, which I figured would happen. And poor Texans, you know, I'm glad the Cowboys won, but, man, it's just told my wife, I said, when it rains, it pours, you have the opportunity to win games, just can't find a way to get it done, and they didn't. But uh, they played hard, that's for sure. Yeah, that, that first drive and the last drive, if you're Cowboys fans, was great. Everything mm-hmm. else, don't bother watching. That's right. <laughs> Watch the start and the finish. Yeah. All right. Well, let's talk about some Brownwood Lions sports over the weekend. We had uh, basketball, lots of boys basketball, so let's start there. Yeah, uh, I got to go to the Brady Tournament for just a little bit and watch our guys transport a couple kids over. They had some tests and do that they played really well against the Colorado team that, that I thought was a good basketball team. They beat Lano and Grape Creek the first day, then wound up beating Eldorado the second day, and then returned on Saturday and played Brady and beat them. Uh, which was a team that beat us earlier in the year. And then they dropped the last game to Rock Springs and talking to Coach uh, Parker, you know, that game came down to the last play of the game, but they, he thought was not a great foul. The kid falls down and says he got hurt. So they get to choose who they put on the free throw line, and they pick their shooter, and they put him on the free throw line and made two free throws with no time on the clock to win the game. So they lost that game by one point, but all in all, four and one for the weekend. And, uh, great for them uh, going out there, and, and you know we're we're down. Some you got Thad Hines and I call are both out uh, right now with some injuries, so an ankle and a knee, so they're depleted a little bit. But man, they still get out there and fight and play hard, and their bench is strong, and and really uh, pleased with what we see there. Uh, the girls travel to get Goldthwait and drop their match against Goldthwait. From what I understand, the coach they dropped the spot on 19 points. It's hard to overcome that kind of deficit in a ball game, but they'll bounce back and be resilient. Uh, talked to Coach Mosqueda, a girl scrimmaged against Alvarado on uh, Friday and uh, was extremely excited about what she saw with the girls. Uh, very excited about the season. I mean, she's bubbly anyway. You can tell her kids respond to her personality and the way she coaches, and, and she was thoroughly excited about the start they had and really excited about the season. So we'll get a little bit more. I don't want to say too much. Uh, they're still practicing. they got another scrimmage this week. Uh, and scrimmages are just glorified practices against someone else. So it uh, just gives you an opportunity to go out there and work against a different uh, opponent. So a good practice time for them. But I want her to be able to get more into that on Wednesday. That's going to be our special guest. But I don't want to you know, spill the Kool-Aid. I want her to do it so uh, she can do a better job of it anyway. So she's going to give us a forecast for our for her season and the girls and what she expects from on Wednesday. All right. Um, as far as basketball goes, especially on the boys' side, with you know getting a late start with getting everybody there, just how important are these tournaments to play that many games and kind of get the chemistry going? Uh, it's starts? it's huge. I mean, everybody sort of finds their role, and, and whether they're the sixth player or one of the first five, or whether the eighth player, the tenth player, where they're coming in, what their role is, what position they'll move to, or how they transition from uh, you know one set to another. Meaning, you know, I saw times where Jason Jackson's playing the certain position when this person comes in he changes to another position so them working out the ins and outs of how they want to transition uh, with their personnel during the game and just the chemistry of working together like I said they don't have Ike and Thad right now who are both good basketball players that will get in that mix somehow Uh, but once they get back from injury they'll just be stronger and and I tell you what they play really hard and and inside you know I think Trent Lofton and Luke Gray do a phenomenal job uh, inside on the boards and effort and uh, 
liking what I see there. And, you know, and Jason Jackson will move down there and learn some of the block stuff. And I thought he played really well in the game I got to see against El Dorado. So, uh, all in all, I mean, they got a good group. They got, you know, Caleb does a good job at point guard along with Tristan. And and uh, I just think that they got a pretty good mix of guys that care about each other and they play hard for Coach Parker, and he does a phenomenal job. So I'm excited to see how they do in the, when district gets here. And the girls, of course, played Gulfway, who's undefeated, a really mm-hmm. good team. And they turn around, and they're right back in action here in a little bit. Yeah, they're playing uh, Burnett at home. So those early games start at 4.30, so those are already in action. But uh, you want to catch the varsity girls play. Uh, they should be going, kicking it off, tipping it off here in a little bit against the Burnett Lady Bulldogs, I guess they're called. They are. Mm-hmm. And what else we got going on this week? Uh, tomorrow, tomorrow, Tuesday, the boys will be uh, at Abilene Cooper. They'll start at 4. Our girls' soccer team, again, will scrimmage Sweetwater at 5 at Gordonwood Stadium. And then uh, later in the week, we have bas- girls' basketball at Springtown, girls' soccer at Abilene Wiley, and then boys' basketball. Uh, ninth and JB will be at the Glen Road Tournament. Um, of course, this is the last week of school. Next week, Christmas break. Mm-hmm. How hard is it to keep students focused on – athletics with a break coming up well we just don't change what we do i mean the, the schedule stays the same they just look at it as another monday or tuesday you know it gets hairy come wednesday thursday friday when the schedules are different you have some kids that are exempt uh, from exams you have uh you know you may see one kid one day and that's the only time you see them the rest of the week so uh uh we'll we'll work our kids out you know uh Practice wise, like if you're in season with basketball and soccer, they'll continue to they'll go through their schedule, but they're going to still have their same practice times, uh, regardless if a kid has to be at school or not. They know be there at time for practice and weights and all that kind of stuff. That doesn't change, and still go through that routine for the off season group. That the guys that aren't in season right now, uh, we're lifting, uh, getting ready to uh, kick off our full off season come uh, January when we get back. So. Uh, Nothing changes except for a little bit on Thursday, Friday, Saturday. The schedule changes a little bit and when you may get those kids. So, like, we get the uh, fifth period kids maybe at a different time than we usually do and get eighth period at a different time than we used to do with them. So it could be at 11 o'clock instead of 3.30, something like that. But usually it doesn't change. Uh, those, Like I said, those teams that are in season usually keep their practice schedule the same. Okay. Um, you want to talk a little state football? Yeah, let me just mention before I forget it, uh, it, it's really important to me. Academics are huge, you know. That's why we go to school, and that's why we have athletics. Athletics is a tool that we use to mold young people and to get them an education. And like for a young man like me, uh, that didn't have a father figure at home uh, when I was in high school, it's important that I was in athletics because athletics is what made me make my grades, and that's a fact. I went to school to play sports, but I knew if I didn't get an education that uh, I wasn't going to get to play sports. And what I learned from that is the most important thing is that education and. Uh, we get those kids that are academic all district, which I, which I mentioned before. But uh, we have five young men, Chance Jones, Chris Robinson, and, and Isaac Gray were second team academic all state, which is extremely difficult to get. Uh, and I'm talking 97 averages, you know, for their high school career in that second team, which is, is impressive. So to get on that list is, is really neat. Uh, that's done by the Texas High School Coach Association. You submit your uh, – uh, applicants into them and they determine where they are and how they uh, place and Isaac Rodriguez and Brian Osborne were both honorable mention all state academically so that's really important to me to have five kids in that upper echelon of education is important uh, it sort of sets the example to others so congratulations to those five young men for receiving those honors yeah, so. definitely definitely a big deal mm-hmm. all right well let's talk a little state since coach Mosquito is going to be in Wednesday we'll okay. talk a little state football here let's just kind of go through the games and just your two cents on everything we'll start with six man since mm-hmm. you saw a couple of May games the last few years so we've got Benjamin and Lorraine in the small school game and Abbott and Westbrook in the big school game any thoughts on those teams? don't know a bunch about those uh, Really, I'd be lying if I told you something. You'd probably be able to fill me more on those. I know I think Westbrook has been decent in the past. Yeah, they beat May last year. Yeah, and, uh, they, you know, they, it's crazy how you look at opponents and you think you can measure them before the game, but you can't. You know, you see, I'll give you a great example, that basketball against uh, San Angelo Lakeview. When they walked in the gym, there wasn't much to look at, but those kids played extremely hard and, and were very well coached and made a great ball game. So, like I said, I don't know much. I haven't been able to see a six-man game this year, but uh, if they're uh, playing for their state title, they're pretty dang good. So, All right, well, let's go to 2A, a couple of fairly close teams. We've got Albany against Martin, Holly against Refurio. Uh, I'm taking Refurio. Uh, 
Uh, Grant Feaster, who was with us before, is there. I uh, was on the defensive side. I talked to him a lot. I think they're pretty powerful by listening to him. Uh, so I give them the advantage in that one. And that Mart and Albany game is going to be a slobber knocker. I mean, Mart has just blown people away all year long, and so has Albany. And Albany's faced some worthy opponents and, and just sort of dismantled them. So uh, that's going to be a good football game. Uh, I, I'm going to root for Albany, of course. But uh, Mart is a worthy opponent, and they're going to be really good. All right, let's go up to 3A. First game is Gunner and Poth, and then Brock and Franklin. Yeah, I'm taking Franklin again. Uh, I think they're powerful. You know, Brock's done a great job of rebounding from an 0-4 start. they got a good program. Uh, they're a good football team, but I think Franklin's the elite in that division. And then you look at the other one, which is uh, Gunner and Poth. I don't know a ton about Poth. I know they're athletic, but uh, Gunner's solid year in, year out. I know they're coached extremely well. They just knocked off an extremely good Canadian team, uh, so i take Gunner in that one. All right. 4A now. Carthage and Wimberley in Division Two, and China Spring and Bernie in Division One. Yeah, uh, the the Wimberley uh, Carthage game is going to be a good game. I'll take Carthage. You know they beat Grant, uh, Glen Rose uh, by a touchdown. I think it was. That's a Glen, back and forth. Yeah, yeah, it was a back and forth game. I was really cheering for Glen Rose. You know uh, they got a very strong senior class and a good, very well coached. Uh, good football team. Cliff Watkins is a great person. I was cheering for them. Carthage is going to be strong. Of course, they always are. Uh, and then Wimberley, you know, they're starting quarterbacks playing quarterback for China Spring. That mm -hmm. sort of tells you about their program. That's impressive that uh, they're starting quarterback for two years, moves to China Spring, and they don't miss a beat and, and play and playing for the state championship. But I think I'll take Carthage in that one. And then uh, Bernie and, and China Spring, who knows? Mm -hmm. I mean, rarely do you go into a semifinal game and win 35 to nothing against a team as talented as Chapel Hill. And Chapel Hill has some great skill kids. Uh, they were projected to play in the state championship, and a lot of people project them to win it. And for Bernie to beat them like they did, that says a lot. So it's going to be a knockdown drag. I imagine that's going to be a close game. And I really don't know who to pick. I've seen China Spring, but I haven't seen Bernie. But I sort of have a feeling that Bernie's going to give them all they can they can uh, muster. And it depends on who makes plays that day and who doesn't. So, you know, games can be determined by about four plays in a ball game. And whoever makes those four plays will probably be successful in that one. Decatur put a little scare into China Yeah, I mean, Spring. that's a good game, too. And I know Decatur was good, and, and, and I know China Spring is good. It just sort of we talked about that today, you know, how we're right there on the edge. We really felt like in the scrimmage early in the year that we really got after burnt, uh, Decatur, and we felt like we could if we had the opportunity to play them. It uh, just didn't present itself, so you're almost splitting hairs. You know, it's like I said before, it's that team that there's four or five plays that can define a victory in a football game. And that's really what it boils down to. When you, when it all boils down to it, the game that we played against Wichita Falls, they made those plays we didn't. And uh, again, that ball game with, with uh, Decatur was close. One. I mean, I'm sure they had China Springs worried. And, and, and uh, like I said, that's how those games ought to be. You know, semifinal games should be close, should be uh, very level opponents. And like I said, that sort of makes me think a little bit about Bernie and the fact that they beat just shut out mm -hmm. Chapel Hill, who hadn't been shut out all year. I mean, they're a good football team. They just beat them 35 to nothing, and that started early. Yeah. Uh, five a game, South, Lo South Oak Cliff and Fort Natchez Groves, and then Alito and College Station. I'll take Alito. Uh, <laughs> it's usually a safe bet. Safe bet. They came back and beat uh, Longview, who is a very good football team, 17-14. Uh, and then uh, i got to go with Fort Natchez Grove, man. Uh, they, they've done some good things. They're really impressive. Uh, South Oak Cliff beat Argyle by seven or eight, I think, 14 to six, I think it was, and Argyle beat uh, Abilene Wiley by a touchdown. So, I mean, there's some uh, – Argyle's been ranked number one all year long. South Oak Cliff beat them. But, man, after I look at and see what Port Nature's Grove did, that, that was impressive to me. They, they've been rolling, and I thought that maybe that would come to an end, but it hasn't. So I haven't seen them, but that would be my prediction, be Port Nature's Grove. All right, in 6A, we've got DeSoto and Austin Vandergrift and Duncanville and Galena Park North Shore. Or what is Park 4? God, I know it's 3. That's going to be a slobber knocker. I don't know. I think ooh, uh, North Shore knocked off uh, Austin Westlake, which is always a good uh, opponent. And then the, uh, Duncanville beat a really good prosper team. I mean, beat them pretty good. So that's going to be just round three is what that's going to be. That's going to be a big Big time fight, and then you look at uh, who are we looking at the net? What was uh, that one? DeSoto and Vandergrift. Yeah, DeSoto. How about them? Mm -hmm. Knocked off uh, Denton Guy. 
coup yeah. had been just throttling people. Yeah. And I really felt like Denton Geyer was the team to beat. And man, 47-28, I think that score was. And they're playing Vandergriff, uh, offensive coordinator Vandergriff is Brett Mauser's brother. Oh, okay. Uh, so I got to speak to Brett this weekend, and, and uh, they're excited about being there. They've always been right there on the cusp of getting over the top and getting to that, that championship, and they made it this year. Uh, uh, who did they play? They played uh, uh, Katie. Katie, yes. That's, oh. <laughs> I mean, that's, a, that's a giant in 6A, yeah. uh, knocking off Katie. So that ought to be a great ball game. Uh, I'm excited to see them. Well, I saw they got the push on social social media to get over 60,000 fans Friday. Do you think that's going to be possible? Uh, I think it'll be close. They're pushing it all the time. Uh, I got an opportunity to go and, and sit in a luxury box if I choose to, but I just don't think I'm going to go this year. I don't think I've missed a, those games in a lot of, long time, but, man, I still sort of got a broken heart. I hate. I'm not, I just don't want to sit there and watch it, so I don't know if I – can get it on TV if I watch it there. I'll find a way to probably watch it. I don't know if I'm going to show up there to watch it. I just, I just don't want to be there right now. So I got a bad taste in my mouth. Go so watch the Cowboys games instead. They need you more. Yeah, boy, I tell you what, I was cheering for them, and I thought, you know, it's going to come down to the end. They're going to get the ball, and they're going to wind up scoring. And, and poor Lovey Smith, and uh, the Texans just going to fall off again. They're one eleven and one, so they got all ones in their record column. But uh, the good news is they'll be getting the first round pick in the draft. Yeah, they will. Who are they going to pick? I don't know. <laughs> I can worry about that in a couple months. Yeah, I like uh, that number two runner-up. I like the runner-up in the Heisman Trophy voting. Who was the runner-up? Oh, TCU yeah. quarterback. Who, okay. Yeah, they could use a quarterback. Yeah. Well, the Texans yeah. could use a lot of things, actually. Yeah, they could. They had a lot of guys <laughs> hurt still like to won the game. Yeah. Anyway. All right, anything else you want to mention today, Coach? Did did we cover everything? We I got believe, it all. We got I the schedule so. for the rest of the week. We're going to have Coach Mosqueda in on Wednesday, so make sure you tune into that uh, to listen to her. Sorry about that. And you can hear her and the excitement that she brings to the girls' soccer program and get a forecast on their season. And then uh, we'll uh, make sure we thank those that make this show possible. Sorry. Auto Glass Magic, Burner Auto Group, Syntex Body and Paint, Syntex Equipment Sales, Citizens National Bank, Dan Hill Containers, Dr. Bon Young, Dr. Pepper Bonding Company, Everett Jones Investments, Henry Medical, Howard Enterprises, Humphrey Peets, Harlem Funeral Home, Landmark Life, MC Bank, Painter and Johnson Associates, Smith & Sharp Agency, Sonic Drive-In, Stanley Chrysler, Texas Bank, Weldon Wilson Electric, Western Bank, and Willis Tees. All right, that will wrap up today's edition. We will back. Be, be we back will be back Wednesday, Wednesday here on KOXE, KOXE.com, the KOXE app, and the KOXE Facebook pages. Have a great day, Brown.